Uh, yeah, we're on mute now. Hi everyone, hello. Uh, can you hear us? Please let us know in the comments if you can hear and see us. Fantastic, we've got Denzel Dean can hear us. Stephanie West can hear us, yay. yay. And loads of people. Um, I'm Holly and confusingly. I'm also Holly. So you got that. the two Hollies today. Um, so yes, very much welcome. Uh, there's a few people still waiting to get sound. Um, Rory, what do we do if people don't have sound? Have we got instructions for them? We have uh, Rory on our tech support side, so um, he will be fielding your questions as we are doing the training uh, this evening. Okay, Kathleen Shaw can see and hear us. I think there's a sound problem on their side. Yeah, okay. maybe check your own computer if you're not getting sound. Yeah. It seems like a lot of other people have got sound. Yeah. Fantastic. Hello, Ross Jenkins from Hereford. Um, all right, we're going to make a start. Rory Tech, is that right? Mm -hmm. I think we're good to go, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, everybody, welcome to the call. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's amazing to have so many people. We have got 148 participants. So 148 of you hopefully have enjoyed your dinner and are now ready for a uh, fascinating 20 minutes or half an hour or so. A bit longer, um, where we are going to be training you in persuasive conversations uh, about how you can win the argument for labour. Whether you're going out canvassing in the next few weeks, whether you're convincing your colleagues at work, whether you are going and convincing your friends in the pub, which is a little bit what I do, whether you're convincing your family around the dinner table. Um, so yeah, and also just to say that um, whilst people are joining in, uh, make sure that you introduce yourselves in the chat box. Um, let us know where you're coming from. Um, so where are we all from today? Let us know in the chat box would be fantastic. And if you're new to campaigning as well, we've got Jenny Miller from Essex. We've got Norwich, Denzel Dean, great name. Dev Devin Valentine from Too Many People. Lorna Walker from Hull. Shout out Lorna Walker. Oh, they're flooding in now. Hello, hello everybody. They're moving, oh, George, who's just from Green New Deal. You just live in the Green New Deal. Fantastic. Lucky you. Yeah. Um, so if you are dialing in by phone, just to let you know, you can't use the chat box during the call, uh, but we still know that you are there. Um, and we will send all of the key links through by email afterwards. So if you have any questions, you will get everything to us via email after this call. Um, all right, so right. are we ready to start? Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So we've got exactly 24 days left until the general election, and these 24 days are going to be the most important of our lives. The options before us could not be clearer. It's either disaster capitalism with Boris Johnson or transformative socialism with Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah. We really, really, really can win this election. And tonight we're going to be talking all about one of the ways you can make that happen persuading people, as Holly said. Mm -hmm on the doorstep, in the pub, at work, wherever you are. Um, we don't have the billionaire backers or the friends in the mainstream media. Our power comes from Labour's hundreds of thousands of members having hundreds of conversations all across the country. In 2017, everyone said the polls showed us we couldn't win, but we slashed May's majority. We won in places we never expected. Kensington, Cambridge, Sheffield. Yeah, remember when we, we, when we beat Nick Clegg in Sheffield, <laughs> took a seat off the Lib Dems? We'll take plenty yeah. more of them in this election. Yeah, especially exactly. for a Tory, Tory <laughs> turned Lib Demers. Yeah. I would love to take those seats. Love to see <laughs> so it. <fun. laughs> yeah. Um, so you might be door knocking, you might be phone banking, you might be just trying to convince your mates in the pub, but every single conversation matters and every conversation is going to help us win. Mm. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about um, giving you skills and knowledge, everything you need to feel confident persuading people. Um, cool. So we're going to share a screen, show you some slides about how to have persuasive mm. conversations. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do a little tech, technical twist here. Mm. And for a while, you will be able to see some slides that you'll hear us talking over. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. So uh, we will get that ready. Are there any call outs that we need to do, Rory, from the tech team in the meantime? We're all good. OK. Okay, so oh, we're on my Twitter timeline. Let's see if we can get to 
here fantastic so can you let us know if you can see the slides that are now on our screen please say yes if you can see our slides for the persuasive conversations training 2019 oh yeah lovely um that's gone okay so we had a little techie issue um rory can people see our slides um i think they can it looks like they can please say them. yes if you can see our slides philip from derby can you see them fiona green can you see our slides yes okay philip from derby is saying yes we can see a picture of you philip derby with your <laughs> thumbs up so thank you very much all right so here we go here are a couple of the things that we know work on the doorstep so these are ways that we think you can have really persuasive conversations. Now, we are going to start with one of the first things that we got from the uh, Bernie Sanders campaign, actually. So the Bernie Sanders campaign came here in 2017, and they gave us the techniques that have really worked for the Bernie campaign on the doorstep there. And this one is called Your Personal Story. And what we know is that it's we, if we can share what motivates us to knock on doors for labour, then that can really help others to build a relationship with them, especially when you're knocking on someone's door and they don't know anything about you and, and you don't know anything about them. So it might be for you, maybe it's your job that motivates you to knock on doors for labour. Maybe it's your family, your community. Please do type in the chat box and let us know what it is that motivates you to knock on doors. So I'm a secondary school teacher um, and often when I knock on people's doors, especially when people say that, you know, they're not, they don't feel that political. And I tell them about the fact that it was my job as a teacher, seeing cuts to school funding, seeing the kind of really um, horrible changes to assessment and um, accountability that creates such a narrow view of education is what really motivates me um, to do the work that I do. And, and that's a story I tell on the doorstep a lot because it helps you build a relationship straight away. So um, that can be a really fantastic way to open up your conversation with someone, tell them why you're there and what brings you there today. Um, okay, we can see some people saying, lots of people saying it's the NHS. Um, we know that lots, you know, universal healthcare, obviously all of us have got some experience working at the NHS. Anything in particular that's coming up that people are saying? Mm -hmm. mm. Kathleen is a retired teacher um, and her daughter's a mental health nurse. Um, we've got Adam, whose dad is a firefighter, who's had his pension slashed. I mean, talk about the motivation to mm. vote for people who are going to fix pensions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of people work for the NHS. Mm. Um, but it might not even be just your job. It could be maybe for your family. Maybe you're worried about your children. Maybe your grandchildren. Is it that you are worried about, you know, that what their future is going to be. Um, please do keep coming through in the chat box because there's some really inspiring things that are coming through and some things that make us feel angry as well. Um, Stephanie talking about the fact that she's got relatives who live in the US who have to pay for healthcare. Um, and we know that you know Boris Johnson is trying to get Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump style Brexit deal, which is gonna really undercut our NHS. So that I know that lots of people are um, really motivated by that. So, you can see that you all have stories for why you got involved in labour and why you'll be going out campaigning and knocking on doors in the next few weeks. And it can be a really powerful thing to do to tell your story um, to somebody that you're, you're speaking to. We're quite reserved as British people sometimes. I think that's not too much of a stereotype. It feels quite un American to unload our personal story, but it doesn't have to be your deepest, darkest secrets. It can really just be anything that gets you out on those cold December nights and we think really builds trust and hope certainly all right so um should we move on to our next section yeah that sounds good fantastic so once you have told your personal story yes so yeah 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 um so you know what it is in your life that you want changing what gets you out on the doorstep but why labor, right? Why, why do these stories about pain and misery or you know, stories about hope for the future, why does that translate into campaigning for labor? It's because we've got policies to actually address them. Mm. So as well as talking about yourself and about those stories, we need to be able to talk about the policies that are actually gonna 
do something about all these things. But, um, so I think it can be hard talking about policies on the doorstep because maybe you feel like you don't know everything, you haven't memorized the whole manifesto, you're not a policy expert. Or maybe you feel like there's a million things that you'd really love to talk about and you wish you had half an hour of this person's time, but you don't, you only have a couple minutes. Um, so you need to really think about it beforehand. What is the policy that speaks to you? What's something you're excited about, Labour? Tell us in the chat, what's your favourite policy? Why is it important to you? How does it address those personal stories that we were just talking about? Mm. And, uh, Lisa likes the Green New Deal. Great, so do I. Yeah, Philip um, from Derby talking about the £10 minimum living wage. You know, we've got four million people living in, in work poverty, people who are working on poverty wages. Um, and, you know, we know that a Labour government is going to make work pay. Um, mm -hmm. Keep them coming through. It's fantastic yeah. to see them. Because also, I often, sometimes I forget about all the policies we've got. We've got so many yeah. fantastic ones. And, you know, yeah. keep them coming in the chat box. So yeah. free broadband for everyone. Imagine how HD you'd be able to see both yeah. Hollies if we all had fiber optic fast broadband. Um, exactly. But in all seriousness, it makes these kind of really, you know, 21st century technologies that allows us to do things like this. Broadband can make a dramatic difference yeah. to some of the organising work we can do yeah. as well. Exactly. Do we have anyone on the call living in a rural area mm. with, you know, really rubbish connection? Yeah. Um, I was reading yesterday about some places in Wales that only have internet in the daytime and mm. switches off at night. Yeah. Um, which, you know, is not very 21st century. So, yeah. yeah. So... We've got to link these stories to policies. We mm. want to speak about them. We've got to speak about them in quite a short space of time. It's actually really amazing reading all your messages, but <laughs> yeah. most of them are just one line long, yeah. right? You've condensed what's exciting about the whole manifesto into just one line there, mm. which is exactly the kind of thing we need to do in these persuasive conversations. Um, but we're going to show you a structure, aren't we, yes. now? Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So we've got sort of some ideas for how to talk about snappy policies in a persuasive um, and quick kind of way like you need to do when you're persuading someone. Um, so you want to get what it is that you're angry about, what it is that's wrong, you know, what it is, maybe this is where your story comes in, and then what it is that Labour's going to do about that, and then, you know, something that's hopeful about why will it be good, what will it be like once we've fixed this. Um, so we've got, as you can see on your screen, some ideas for sentences, it's mm. wrong that, Labour is going to, this would be brilliant because. So, you know, we saw someone in the chat mention the Green New Deal, mm. maybe you'd say, it's wrong that we're burning the planet, mm. right? It's wrong that our children, our, our grandchildren are not going to have habitable uh, air to breathe, you know, half the country could be underwater. Mm. Labour is going to massively restructure the economy so that the environment is prioritised and invest in green mm. technologies, invest in green jobs, move away from fossil fuels. It's going to be brilliant because it's going to conserve the environment and it's going to create those jobs that we need. Mm. Um, it's going to help workers. Mm. So, yeah, avoid jargon, keep it brief, use those sentence starters. Uh, and then one more thing quickly wanted to go through about what's a less good way to talk about policy that it can be really tempting to do, natural way to think about things. When someone asks you about policy, you just want to tell them everything you know, download the whole manifesto straight into their brain. Um, but it can be really hard for people to pick through that and sort of hold on to each thing and figure out what it is you meant. It can make it all seem too much. And it can also get them into an argument with you where they start trying to think of reasons that you're wrong and mm. reasons that they're right and get into a back and forth. And that's just not helpful for persuading someone because then they're not thinking about why you might be right. They're thinking about why you're wrong. And, you know, for their pride, they're not going to want to say, oh, yeah, okay, you did convince me. Mm. Um, so you don't want to just, you know, put it all out there at them. Um, you want to be a bit more thoughtful. Um, and Holly is going to tell you about a really cool um, response cycle that we've got, which is sort of a more smooth way yeah. to, to bring those conversations around. Yeah. 
Holly. Thank you. So like, a few people have been saying on the chat box, yeah, okay, we can talk about our favourite policies, but we've got to listen first. And I would absolutely agree because we need to direct our policies depending on what the person in front of us really cares about. There's no use us talking about tuition fees if that person, for them, tuition fees isn't that important. Okay, so we need to make sure that um, what is that person really, really caring about and what do they really want to know. So we've come up with something called this response cycle and it's got six steps. So I'm going to explain the steps to you. As you go, please ask questions if there's anything you don't understand. We can see your chats coming through as well and, and um, we'll be looking at it. So please do ask questions as we go along. All right, so this is our response cycle. The first thing you do when you're having a conversation with someone, this is for the doorstep in particular, you introduce yourself. You smile, you give a friendly get greeting. Somebody in Durham told me that she often often compliment something in the house, lovely curtains or nice bushes in the front garden. And you let the voters know who you are, a community member, not that you are from the Labour Party, because lots of people think that you're employed by the Labour Party, when actually there's something very powerful about the fact that you are saying that you are a volunteer. So I often say, hi, I'm Holly, I'm a volunteer with the Labour Party. And the first thing I ask them is, I'm just wondering if you've thought about how you're going to vote in the election really important that early on you ask them how they're planning on voting. Why? Let me tell you. So, why is it important? You know, if someone says they vote Labour, Holly, what do we do? Well, I mean, it might be really fun to talk to them for ages about why you both love Labour, but two open doors I've got in this mm. election. You say, thank you. Give them a high five. Yeah. Why are you not out here with me canvassing as well? Yeah. Or let me move on. Right. Yeah. And then what do we do if um, someone says they always vote conservative? Thank you for your time. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> and we need to know that they always vote conservative so that we don't knock on their door on the 12th of December and we don't remind them to vote. We only want to be reminding Labour Party voters to vote on that day. So we don't want to waste our time going to that door at the time. But what if someone says they voted Labour or Conservative last time but aren't sure? Or they haven't decided yet. Or they say they don't vote. What would they do then, Holly? This is someone we can persuade. <laughs> this is who we're looking for. This is who we want. This person is worth our time. Yeah, fantastic. So you've worked out right at the beginning of the conversation and um, whether you should spend some time having your persuasive conversation with this person. And then you need to work out what's important to them. So the first, the really the first couple of minutes you're with a voter on the doorstep, you are mainly asking them questions. So you might ask them, is there anything that you need to think you need needs to be changed in this country? What's your biggest concern for your local community? Is there anything you're worried about in this election? And you would be pleasantly surprised that for all that the media have said that this is a Brexit election, often people bring up very, very genuine concerns about the NHS, about housing, about schools. So, you know, don't be worried about this because people bring up things that people feel really, really confident and speaking to. Um, all right, somebody has said on uh, about when someone says that they um, don't care about voting. I think it's always worth having a conversation with those people. We know that lots of people are registering to vote for the first time in this election, and we sometimes can convince them, especially when we get them to talk about maybe is there something at your job that you're not happy with? Maybe is there something, you know, what's your, you know, how are you feeling about um, your pay at work, your time off, your working conditions, or perhaps, you know, your local NHS, your doctor's surgery? And, Often people say very political things that we can speak to quite a lot. Um, all right, so um, once you've asked the voters what's important to them, then you've got to acknowledge their concerns. So we, what we want to say is that we understand where the person is coming from, because then people feel like we're really listening rather than just trying to um, talk at them. Now, the only caveat to this is sometimes people, people might say something that we find maybe a bit offensive and we don't want to say, I understand. You know, sometimes people talk about immigration in a way that we don't agree with, but what we can do there, oh, oh somebody <laughs> drew a red line on our screen. I don't know how that happened. Um, you know, one of the things that um, you can do there is someone saying something that you don't really, you really don't want to say, you know, I understand yeah. that. You can say lots of people, we've spoke to have said that or I've heard other people say that before because in that way you're not saying that their concerns are valid you're just saying that you they've been heard and then you might be able to have a conversation with them which we're going to go on to next about really what their concerns are because often particularly concerns around immigration are often things to do with um 
uh, sort of the NHS and housing and yeah, things like that. Exactly. Anyway. exactly. But like the point of this step really is about making sure that the person knows that you heard them because mm. that's just so unusual in politics, right? There's so many people who say they feel like politicians aren't listening to them. Uh, you want to show them. Oh, oh, are we well, muted? No, 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 okay. no okay. Okay. Uh, well, you want to show them that we actually are listening to them, that we care about what they think, even if we don't agree what they think, we care about what they think. Yeah. Um, and also, this is the stage where you get to avoid getting into a fight with them. You mm. avoid getting into an argument with them. You build up the goodwill. You make it easier for them to listen to you, easier yeah. for them to be persuaded. And yeah. Great. So, once you've acknowledged their concern, then you're trying to find out what the most important issue is. We're getting quite a few messages saying they can't see us now, uh, Rory in the team. Can you see us, your end? I can see you guys. Okay, all right, we'll keep going. But if you've got any issues, please let us know. There's just a couple of people um, who are saying they can't see us. Uh, okay, people are asking some quite specific questions now. Um, we will take some kind of as we go along, mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, let's talk about the one that we can see up on green at the moment. So um, about the Scottish voters who are pro-independence. I think the important thing to say about this is that, you know, Corbyn has said that he supports a second referendum in Scotland, um, as long as there's a majority one for Holyrood in the 2021 um, Scottish Holyrood election. So, given the SNP a majority, and we think that would probably be quite likely again, the point is to say is that Corbyn agrees with the principle of a second referendum, um, but he would want to wait and see that, that the SNP got a um, majority again, because that would show a very, very clear mandate for one. So, um, that's certainly the line um, that, that, that I would give for that question. All right, so... Let's get on. So once you've acknowledged their concern, maybe you've acknowledged the fact that they're worried that they're a pro-independent Scottish supporter, um, and they, uh, but they want to vote for Corbyn. But now we're really trying to talk about isolating the most important issue. Because for example, someone might bring up immigration, actually we know it's the NHS or housing they're worried about. Or someone might bring up that they're worried about Jeremy Corbyn and his leadership, but sometimes there's just specific policies we can address. So, you know, they might say, oh, well, you know, Labour's just, you know, going to spend too much money. The, the Tories have said they're going to spend one billion, gazillion, trillion pounds. And we can go back to them and we can really direct them and reframe those conversations in, in the most um, kind of important way. So... Um, once you've isolated what it is, you know, we've really found out the specific issue that that person cares about, then you can address your concern with a policy, all right? So let's say you've worked out that actually they're just worried about getting school places for their children. It's not immigration they're worried about, they're just trying to get some school places for their children. You can then introduce a policy and, a, you know, a statistic that is relevant to that person. So did you know that the Labour Party is going to um, build a national education service, uh, which means that um, all children will have access to um, really um, high quality early years funding. There's going to be a massive increase in childcare allowances so that people you know all children get the best start in life um, and then they're going to go on to schools that are going to have a massive injection of funding after the conservatives have kind of imposed austerity for a really long time so it's only really when you know what the person in front of you cares about that you can really focus a policy to them until you've got that don't just unload all your policies in one go um, yes is there anything else we want to say on that yeah I don't yeah? think so I guess it can be really tempting to skip straight to this step um but actually you know this comes quite close to the end of this cycle mm. right you've got to do a lot of ground to prepare someone to listen to what you've got to say not yeah. just jump straight down their throat with this yeah um but you do get to have this step you do get to yeah. tell them and as dave friedman yeah. says on that um if anti corbyn just reply you are not marrying him <laughs> It's just, and he has been consistent in his policies of time in government. I mean, I think that makes yeah. Jeremy Corbyn a good husband, but yeah. consistency <laughs> with his policies. But um, yes, no, just, you know, we're, we, you know, Jeremy represents the policies, he represents the ideas, but, and he is personally a good person. We know he has voted consistently since being an MP in 1983. He's always stood up for his principles, whether as an anti-apartheid campaigner, um, to anti-war, anti-Iraq war campaigner, um, and, and yeah, so, you know, we know that we, we can really build Jeremy as a person himself as well. So, address their concern with the policy. You've got your policies and we're going to send you um, lots of policy resources so that you've got answers to the most difficult questions about policies that come up on the doorstep. You will get all of that from us in an email afterwards. 
So the final thing that you do when you are on the doorstep is once you've addressed a concern, you ask for their support. You say, can we count on you to vote for Labour on election day? Because once you've done that, you need to give that data back to the board runner that you're with so that they can make a note of it so that we can make sure that we get out the vote for that person on the 12th of December. We knock on their door again and say, have you gone out to vote? Um, if they've said they are going to vote Labour, um, then, then perhaps um, you, you, if they're really keen, you could ask them to put a poster up in their window, even ask them to consider joining the Labour Party. In Camwell and Peckham, where I did a training the other day, they've had 90 people join the Labour Party in the last few weeks. So it's absolutely possible that people want to join at this point. Yeah. If you get a household where perhaps someone hasn't registered to vote, maybe, um, you know, they're 18 year olds who are just voting for the first time, you could give them a voter registration form or show them how to vote online. But really the main thing, you need to make sure that you ask for their support and if you're if they're still not sure that's fine you can go back and record that on your data sheet as well um okay so once you have done that then you have done your six steps of the response cycle um so you've got your introduce your ask your acknowledge your isolate your address and your final ask um okay amazing, amazing. yeah so okay. I think we are now on to how do we put this into practice? And um, I Holly's going to tell us all about that. Script, so we can stop sharing screen. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, we can see there was quite a few questions earlier. Yeah, okay. Do you want us to go back answer a few questions. of those questions? Cool. Um, Rory, how do we make the our big screen come back up again? Stop sharing. Yeah. Huh? Okay. There we go. Cool. Okay. Hello. Hello, we're back. Amazing. Okay. There we go. Right, we are back in. We can now see ourselves. Um, <laughs> and yes, so we thought we would answer a couple of yeah. the questions. Um, one of them, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. So Tracy has a question that's a bit like, how are you going to pay for this? Or is this not going to get us into loads of debt? So um, I've actually had that come up on the doorstep this weekend. Um, so definitely it is one that comes up. Um, and I think, again, you go through the cycle, you say, yes, I hear that. That is a worrying thing if it was going to mean big tax increases on people like you and me. Um, hear what they've said. Isolate it. Say, are you, are you worried about about tax increases that might affect you? Do you feel like, you know, you might be paying too much tax? Usually they say, yeah, I don't want to pay more tax. And then you get to address it with a policy and say, yeah, well, Labour are going to pay for our spending, but we're going to do it through tax increases on Amazon and on Starbucks and on the top 10% of earners. And usually when you're on the doorstep, you're not talking to someone who's in the top 10% of earners. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe some exceptions, but be honest say that to them and it works really well you know most people have heard that you've heard what they're saying and then listen to them yeah any other question in here so somebody said about what do you do when people have got an issue with a local labor councillor and we know that this comes up sometimes um and i think the thing that obviously firstly acknowledge what their concern is people do get frustrated i think the point is to say is that um the conservatives have actually slash local government budgets in the last nine years. So often Labour Party councils are making very, very difficult decisions. And as much as they would like to set illegal budgets where they overspend what the Conservatives have given them, that is a legal thing to do. And so in lots of ways, you know, these Labour Party councils have really, really had their hands tied. And what we know is that, you know, John McDonnell has got this regional investment plan, which is going to be putting money back into communities where communities are going to have a say over how that money is spent, it's completely reshaping local democracy. Yeah. Uh, someone asking about Brexit. Mm. Um, so just generally they've heard that we're not trusted on brexit again yeah you know ask them isolate it what is the what is it that you're worried about mm. ask them you know is it that they're worried that brexit negotiations are going to go on forever and that we're never going to get to talk about those domestic policies that we all care mm. about like the nhs and health and education and then you can address that by saying look labor have said that regardless of what happens we're going to get Brexit sorted within six months by giving a say back to the people and then either implementing it or remaining, depending on what the people say. And whatever happens will be done in six months. Yeah. Um, and um, 
yeah let's have a look what else is there yeah i think that's quite a lot of the questions are quite similar um about voting lib dem in lib dem tory marginals um well i suppose the point is is that we're mostly we're going to be sending you to um labor marginals so you'll be going to places where the it is either between Labour and Conservative or Labour and Lib Dem, in which case obviously we're always going to be backing um, the Labour vote. So I think the point is, is that you should be voting Labour everywhere, really. Um, yeah, and, you know, especially if you want to keep the Tories out, because, you know, in, in especially in Lib Dem um, Tory marginals, I'm oh, sorry, Lib Dem Labour marginals, that if you get a Lib Dem MP, you end up voting for the Tories, actually, because they can't form a majority government. And obviously what we know is Joe Swinson refused to go into coalition with Labour. Yeah. So actually, you know, unless you vote for Labour, you, you will get the Tories if you vote for anybody else. So true. Yeah. Um, one other big thing that I would say about all these policy areas, all these questions, is never be afraid to tell the voter that you don't know, mm. right? The voters can't smell fear, but they can tell when you're lying. Yeah. So just don't do it. And, yeah. and there's, it's okay. They can relate to that. Part of what you're doing there is showing them that you're a human being, that you're not some party machine. You're not mm. a robot. You're a normal person like they are because normal people like them care about politics. And yeah. So if you don't know, tell them you don't know. That's not a bad look. And you can use it as an opportunity as well to get their contact details. You can mm. say, look, I don't know this, but could I take your email address and I'll see if we can get the candidate to send you something with exactly what the policy is and yeah. follow it up. But, yeah, um, absolutely. So there might, there always might be some things that come on the doorstep that you just don't have the answers to. You know, I went out canvassing the other day and somebody was talking to me about a very local issue about a skip being removed from, you know, the house next door. And that's the sort of thing you just say, well, I'll take that back to the local party um, and make a note of your concerns because we can't, we can't, you know, yeah, deal with everything. All right, guys, so we're getting to the point where we want to start um, doing some getting you ready to go out and um, getting active. Um, and because we're feed, you know, we're seeing hundreds of people coming on these canvassing sessions. We're, we, we've trained a thousand people in the last two weeks and we are seeing hundreds getting out on the doorstep. So but we need to make sure that you don't just sign into the training call on a cold Monday night that you get out as well. So, um, Holly is going to tell us all about what we can do. Amazing! So, I hope you're all excited about using your practice. We have two million doors to knock on in this election, so none of us have any time to waste. Mm. Um, so, I want to ask, you all think about three or four friends who aren't on this call right now, but who might be interested in coming canvassing with you, mm. and I want all of you this evening to make a WhatsApp group or a Facebook group or however you speak to each other with those friends. Let them know when you're going canvassing. Ask them when they want to go canvassing. Make it your Saturday plans. Mm. Make it your after work plans or your after school plans or whatever it is you normally do mm. um, to go out, go canvassing. Um, it's fun. Persuading people is fun. Um, and it's more fun and it's more effective the more people you bring along with you. Um, so make those groups but then also we would really like to know about those groups mm. um it's really helpful for us we want the data and also some of you it'd be amazing if you can make public groups so that we can publicize those we can put them on my campaign map um so that you can say you know you know everyone from my town is going to go to this marginal on this day mm. um and you can let all volunteers come Make it a big thing, make it a fun thing. Mm. And, um, and it doesn't have to be a lot of people. It might yeah. just be a few people that you know who, you know, they support Labour. And you can just say to them, like, don't be going on Facebook on the December the 13th, then sort of saying, why have we got another Tory government? Like, just say to them, this is your chance. Even if those people only go out with you once during the campaign, that once makes a massive, massive difference. Like, I got my dad coming out canvassing with me on Sunday, and he has never been canvassing before and was a lifelong Tory voter. And he loved it so much that he's going to come out every weekend now. So, you you know, it very much is possible to get people out. You just gotta be persistent and dogged to try and get them there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. One person in the chat said, you've asked, people have said no, ask them again. Yeah. You know, we've got Keep like going. three more weeks, right? Yeah. Keep going. Pick them off one by one. Yeah. Find <laughs> different friends. Yeah, get new All friends. Options. Yeah. Yeah. All options.
Um, but yeah, so if you if you can set up a public group, then amazing. Please let us know. I know Rory's posted a link to the form in the chat for us for you to let us know. Um, so also, even if you're not getting that many people, we can publicise them for you. We can put them on my campaign map. Um, so hopefully, you can get some volunteered in who maybe you don't know yet new yeah. friends new comrades new people um who might want to come out in with you um amazing um and that information is really useful for us for lots of different reasons we want to put new canvases in touch with you we want to have an indication of you know which regions we've got that are more active um and we want to be able to respond to the press because they're really interested in what's happening about this mm. fantastic so um we really hope that you set up your own groups and you go out canvassing. I'm sure people on the call know, but the best way to find out where you need to go is mycampaignsmap.com. And that won't just tell you your nearest marginal, it will tell you the nearest marginal that you are most needed in, because we know that some of our marginals are getting hundreds of people and others are not. So it will tell you where we've had the biggest footfall of activists, but actually where we need some people to go to even more. So um, do keep checking back to my campaigns map because it changes some Sometimes where your nearest marginal is, depending on how many people have been going out. Delvin Valentine is a 30 seat model. You get out there every day. Yes. Um, someone said the two hollies rock, so I reckon. Oh, thank thank you. you, Melanie. High five to each other. Yeah, that's a double holly high five. <laughs> um, all right, so I think that's it for everything yeah. today. Have we got any other things we need to share, Rory? No, you no. Guys are, wow, really good. Fantastic. Oh, All right. Well, um, thank you so much for coming, everyone. Uh, we know that everyone's been super, super busy. Um, you know, and you know, we get thanks to the tech team, Rory, who's been answering the chat. Um, we are here in the Momentum office at nine o'clock at night, um, when we will be, uh, I'll be up early teaching tomorrow morning. So we really appreciate you all coming out and um, you know, we've got, is it 20, 24 days, 25 days? 23 days. 23 days of socialism. So get out, get campaigning, get phone banking. All of the resources are gonna be sent to you. Um, so you will have everything there that you need. Um, and it has been fantastic. We're gonna win guys, let's do yes, this. Let's do this. Bye guys, bye bye. bye, -bye. Woo woo woo. Bye.